Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, at this hour, we still don't know what the House of Representatives is going to do. They are amending and changing and modifying the reform of one-sixth of America's economy under cover of darkness, trying to secure the votes necessary to fulfill a political promise. We'll await their decision as to how much havoc they wreak. But I wanted to come down to the floor today and address for a moment the really exceptional process that is occurring right now as we speak in the House of Representatives and to talk about one of the reported changes that they are considering before sending the product over to the United States Senate. Just to review for a minute, um, Speaker Ryan likes to talk about his approach to health care as a three-pronged approach. Well, um, the Congressional Budget Office, headed by uh, a gentleman hand-picked by the Republican House Conference, agrees that it's a three-pronged approach. Uh, they just have a little bit different interpretation of those three prongs. First, they say higher costs, 15 to 20 percent spikes in premiums for everybody right off the bat and then dramatically higher costs, especially for older people, sicker people, and poorer people. If you're young and if you're relatively affluent and you're healthy, you might make out a little bit better under this proposal, but if you're not in that category, you're gonna pay a lot higher costs. Less care, I mean, this is the headline from the CBO report, 24 million people lose health care coverage. That's, that's catastrophic. That's the total population of 17 U.S. states. We just kick them off health insurance. Um, without anywhere to go other than our emergency rooms. And then, you know, all of this is in order to finance a giant tax cut for the rich. I had a chart up here yesterday that showed you that in this bill, if you make zero to $200,000, you get no tax cut. But if you make over $200,000, you get a nice, healthy tax cut. It could be up to uh, $7 million on average for some of the wealthiest taxpayers. So higher costs for everybody. Um, except for maybe a very small slice of the population. Less care, I mean, just, just a nightmare, a nightmare when it comes to the number of people who lose care under this bill, all in order to finance tax cut for the wealthy. That's the background on what Trump care is, on what the American Health Care uh, Act is, and people hate it. I mean, people hate it. There's a new poll out by uh, the Quinnipiac University uh, that shows really stunning numbers. Uh, the approval numbers for this bill are under 20%. You know, Republicans kick the living you-know-what out of the Affordable Health Care Act, and, and they never got its approval ratings down to under 20%, as has happened to the American Health Care Act in its third week of existence. That's pretty impressive for 18% of Americans to approve of a bill that's only been out there for a few weeks, and it's not because they don't know anything about it, because over 50% of Americans don't like it. 18% support it, 56% don't support it across demographic groups, across age groups. Everybody hates this thing because they get it. They're not dumb. They know that this is taking health care for them, passing along higher costs to them in order to finance a tax cut for the rich. It's pretty simple. People really didn't need a lot of time to under stand it. But Republicans in the House know that as this thing hangs out there, it's getting less popular. Hard to get less popular than 18 percent. Um, those are, you know, those are tough numbers to do worse than. But uh, the reason that Republicans are racing this bill through the process is because they know how deeply unpopular it is because they know it's a scam. They know that this is essentially just taking health care from Americans forcing them to pay more in order to finance a tax cut for the rich. And so what's happening today in the House is they are blowing up their rules in order to push a bill through that no one will have looked at. I mean, it's possible that they are going to file a gigantic reform to the entire American health care system and then call a vote on it within hours. But come on. In 2000 and nine and 2010, Republicans were just blistering critics of Democrats who they said were forcing the Affordable Care Act through the process too quickly. But in 2009, 2010, the House held 79 bipartisan hearings and markups on the health reform bill. Over the period of an entire year, 
House members spent nearly 100 hours in hearings, heard from 181 witnesses from both sides of the aisle, considered 239 amendments, and accepted 121 amendments. This bill was introduced two weeks ago. The first time the American public ever looked at it was two weeks ago, and the House is rushing it through today. Two weeks, 14 days, 20 days, I don't know. Not a year, not 79 hearings, not 100 hours of hearings. And we're talking about bringing it up before the Senate for a vote next week with 20 hours of debate on a reordering of one sixth of the American economy. I mean, this is really extraordinary how this bill is getting jammed through the process because Republicans know every day it hangs out there, more people figure out what it is. A massive transfer of wealth from regular ordinary Americans through less care and higher costs to the very rich and also insurance companies and drug companies to get a big tax cut. So on to today's modification of the bill. The talk today is that in order to make the bill a little bit meaner and a little bit crueler, the House is going to remove from the underlying law the requirement that insurance companies cover a basic set of what are called essential benefits. This change is being demanded by the very, very conservative wing of the House Republican Caucus. They call themselves the Freedom Caucus. This is the group of sort of the most radical members in the House of Representatives. And they are demanding that these essential health care benefits be stripped out of the law in order to get their votes. So let's talk about what these essential health care benefits are. So what basically the law says now is that if you're offering an insurance plan and you want to call yourself health insurance, then you have to actually offer to cover health care. So the essential health care benefits, what every plan today just has to offer in order to be able to call themselves insurance in this country are... Um, ambulatory patient care, that means outpatient care, emergency care, hospitalizations, pregnancy, maternity, and newborn care, mental health and substance abuse care, prescription drugs, rehabilitation if you get injured, lab services, tests, chronic disease management, management for diabetes or heart and hypertension, and pediatric services, services for kids. That's it. That's the essential health care benefits. And frankly, if you're buying a health insurance plan, wouldn't you expect that it would cover your emergency care if you were to go to an emergency room? If you're buying health care in this country, what good is it if it doesn't cover a hospitalization because you get really sick? If you're buying an insurance plan in this country, don't, don't you think it's gonna cover your kids when they need basic pediatric services? So what's happening now is something different than healthcare reform in the House of Representatives. What's happening now is really a radical rethink of what healthcare insurance is. If all of a sudden health insurers don't need to cover the costs of your hospitalization, don't need to cover mental illness at all, don't need to cover addiction coverage at all, then is it really insurance any longer? If it's not covering that list of things, what is it covering? Now, CBO has an answer for this. CBO says that if there's an insurance plan that doesn't cover this list of benefits, they won't count it as insurance. So when they're giving you the numbers of the people that will have insurance or not have insurance after this bill, the Congressional Budget Office, the nonpartisan office, says we don't really count it as insurance if it doesn't cover you know, basic stuff like hospitalizations and outpatient services, prescription drugs, pediatric services. And so what's happening now in the House of Representatives is really a radical rethink of healthcare insurance. Healthcare insurance now under this law that they are contemplating passing wouldn't need to cover anything 
You could buy an insurance plan, pay your premiums, and then be told that it doesn't cover your kid when he gets diagnosed with schizophrenia, that it doesn't cover your daughter when she gets in an accident and has to go to the emergency room, that it doesn't cover your spouse when they get really sick and are hospitalized for three days. What, what kind of coverage would that be any longer if it didn't cover that list of things? And let's be honest, this would be a massive transfer of cost onto individuals. The number one prong of Trump care is higher costs. And if insurance companies don't need to cover any of these things anymore, but you still have to buy it, then it's just a massive shift of costs onto individuals. Because remember, Trump care penalizes you if you don't buy insurance. Now, the Affordable Care Act did the same thing. Admittedly, the Affordable Care Act said, if you don't buy insurance, you're gonna pay a penalty. But that's why the Affordable Care Act said insurance has to really be insurance. It has to cover stuff because if we're gonna, if we're gonna require you to buy it or we're gonna penalize you if you don't buy it, then insurance should really be insurance. Well, Trump care penalizes you if you don't buy insurance. It, it, you pay a massive penalty. For a lot of people, the penalty could be $5,000 if they don't buy insurance. But now the change that they're considering in the House of Representatives means that the insurance product that you are forced to buy won't cover diddly. And by the way, when your insurance company doesn't cover it and you have to pick up the cost, it's gonna cost you way more money. Everybody has probably seen a bill from a hospital. Let's say you had to go in and get a colonoscopy. You get your bill and you always sort of scratch your head because you see two numbers. You see the number that the hospital bills and then you see the number that your insurance company pays. Often the number the insurance company pays is like one third of what that hospital billed. Okay, why is that? Well, it's because the insurance company is negotiating with the hospital on behalf of thousands of patients. And so they get that price way, way down. And the insurance company only pays a fraction of the cost that is billed. But if you don't have insurance coverage for it, right, if all of a sudden it's not a benefit in your plan because the American Health Care Act told insurance companies they didn't have to cover a hospitalization, then you will pay that higher price. You don't get the insurance company discount. You will pay that higher number. That's going to bankrupt people. Because I'm just going to tell you, the families in my state, when their child gets hooked on heroin, they're going to find a way to pay for that care so that their child doesn't become another statistic, another one of the 900 that died in my state last year from overdoses. They are gonna do everything possible to get that kid care for that addiction. They will mortgage their house, they will sell their house, they will drain their savings account, they will sell off every possession they have to make sure that their child does not die from an overdose, that that child gets the care that they need. And so if their insurance company won't cover it, then they will do everything necessary to cover it. And you will have a rapid, rapid increase in the number of people whose lives are ruined, who go bankrupt because of their medical costs. Something that doesn't happen right now because the Affordable Care Act gives you real subsidies to afford care, it gives you real help to be able to buy insurance, and requires that insurance companies actually provide you with insurance. This is an extraordinary thing that's happening in the United States House of Representatives right now. Nobody likes this bill. Healthcare experts think it's a joke. The American public have roundly rejected it. And it is getting meaner and crueler every day in order to round up the votes necessary to get it passed. Why? Because this bill is not about solving any problem in the healthcare system. It doesn't solve a single problem. Again, except for this narrow group of younger, healthier, affluent people who will get a little bit less, whose premiums will be a little bit less, everybody else is worse off. It only solves one problem, and it's a political problem. It's a promise that Republicans made to repeal the Affordable Care Act. But they didn't spend any time thinking about how to actually do it, so they're stuck now with an awful bill that not a, 
that nobody likes, that doesn't solve a single problem, that's getting meaner and meaner every single day. It was bad enough, and now this bill is frankly getting into some really radical territory, talking about totally rethinking insurance, letting insurance companies offer you a product that covers nothing and then requiring you to buy it. Think about that. We're gonna require you to buy insurance. The insurance isn't gonna cover anything. Trump Care, American Health Care Act, whatever you wanna call it, it has three prongs. Higher costs, less care, and tax cuts for the rich. We will have an opportunity here in the Senate to get this right. We're not the House of Representatives. I don't know if they're gonna pass this. I don't know if it's gonna fall apart, but we will have a chance to get this right. Republicans and Democrats come together. We could admit together that there's still a lot of things that are wrong with our healthcare system. Affordable Care Act, there's some good parts of it, other parts that need improvement. We could come together and decide to tackle these problems, high drug costs, whatever it may be together and reject this partisan rushed approach in the House of Representatives that does nothing except deliver higher costs, less care in order to finance tax cuts for the wealthy. I yield the floor.